This is Learning with Coach History. Hey, this is the sixth of seven lessons in progressivism. Today we'll talk about progressivism under the Taft presidency. In this lesson, you'll learn about the reforms and political problems of the next president, who is William Howard Taft. The key terms and people in this unit are William Howard Taft, Payne Aldrich Tariff, Gifford Pinchot, the Bull Moose Party, and Woodrow Wilson. President Roosevelt promised not to run for another term. Instead, he wanted William Howard Taft to become president. Taft had been Roosevelt's Secretary of War, and Roosevelt felt he would carry out his policies. Taft was elected in 1909 and continued some of the progressive programs. In fact, he busted 90 trusts during his four-year term. Taft was not as effective as Roosevelt had been, though, and faced many problems. His first problem related to tariffs. Taft supported the tariff-lowering pain bill which was passed in the House. However, the Senate passed a weakened version of the bill called the Payne-Aldrich Tariff. The revised bill did not lower tariffs much at all. Taft signed the bill anyway and defended it. The progressives in Taft's own party were annoyed at this. Another problem for Taft arose over conservation. Conservationists like Gifford Pinchot, the head of the U.S. Forest Service, believed that wilderness areas could be managed for public enjoyment as well as private development. This meant, for instance, that someone could make a profit by logging land that belonged to the federal government. This was called a multi-use land program. Taft appointed Richard A. Bollinger as Secretary of the Interior, angering conservationists. Ballinger did not want to keep so much federal land in reserve. He wanted to free up land for forestry and mining. He wanted to sell some land for private uses. When he did these things, Pinchot complained. Pinchot accused him of misusing the natural resources for commercial interests. As a result of Pinchot's criticism, Taft felt he had to fire Pinchot. The Republican Party had two wings. First, the progressives who wanted change, and the other were the conservatives who did not want reform. Taft was not able to hold the two wings of his party together. The two groups disagreed over Taft's support of political boss Joseph Cannon. Cannon was Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he ran the House his own way. He appointed people to committee positions who weren't the next in line. As the head of the Committee on Rules, he had the power to control what bills Congress would take up. As a result, under Cannon, the House often did not even vote on progressive bills. The Republican Party split over how to handle Cannon. The reform-minded Republicans wanted to remove Cannon from head of the Committee on Rules and were able to do so with the help of Democrats in the House. Some citizens began to question Taft's policies. They blamed the Payne Allrich tariff for a rising cost of living and believed that Taft did not support conservation. The division between the two groups of Republicans gave the Democrats a chance to take over the House in the 1910 midterm elections. Democrats had control of the House for the first time in almost 20 years. By 1912, Teddy Roosevelt had decided to run for a third term as president after all. Taft had an advantage because he was already in office. The Republican Party nominated Taft, but Roosevelt's supporters broke off and formed the Progressive Party. This third party was also called the Bull Moose Party. It ran on a platform of reform. The Democrats were in a stronger position now that the Republicans were split. They nominated the reform governor of New Jersey, Woodrow Wilson. The 1912 election offered Americans four main choices, Woodrow Wilson, William Taft, Teddy Roosevelt, and socialist Eugene Debs. Wilson campaigned on a progressive platform called the New Freedom. He wanted stronger antitrust legislation, banking reforms, and lower tariffs. Both Roosevelt and Wilson wanted to give the government a strong role in the economy. 
but they differed over ways that this would be accomplished. Roosevelt supported government supervision of big business, but did not oppose all monopolies. Wilson supported small business and free market competition, opposing all business monopolies and trusts. Debs went even further by calling for an end to capitalism. Wilson won the 1912 election. He also brought in a Democratic majority in Congress. In all, about 75% of the vote went to the candidates who favored economic reform, Wilson, Roosevelt, and Debs. Because so many people supported reform, Wilson had more power to carry out his reforms once in office. 